Today, I'm gonna to teach you how to make a white peach lemonade mead. So let's get started. Now, full transparency, this mead uses a wine kit base, meaning that I didn't quite formulate some recipe that was lemonade partially and white peaches in the whole and blah, blah, blah. Although I think I could probably create one and maybe I'll put up a rough recipe, untested recipe on the screen as well. But this one used a wine kit. So there are all these wine, I'm gonna call them spritzers kind of kits around. You can find any flavor. Specifically, I found this one online that was a white peach wine kit. It comes with one gallon of like basically grape juice base sort of thing, which is interesting. It also comes with a the, the flavoring, which was the white peach lemonade flavoring that looked like a bag of pee, to be honest, but obviously it was not. Then, of course, this wine kit came with things like uh, bentonite, which is something we use for clarifying. It came with uh, kisasaw and uh, chitosan, or kitosan, however you say it, which are clearing agents. It had some labels that also were with it and the Lauben EC1118 yeast, which is a notable champagne yeast. It's kind of meh. We took that base kit and decided, let's make it into a mead. And I wanted to do two things. I wanted to make a sparkling version, meaning carbonated, of course, and a non-sparkling version. On screen, you can see right here, this is the non-sparkling, non-carbonated version in front of me. Um, and it came off of the main batch, meaning I'm not doing two different things. At some point in my process, I will just kind of put a fork in the road and say, if you want to go still or non-carbonated, take this route. Or if you want to carbonate it, take this route. This recipe specifically requires a kegging system to carbonate. So before you click off and go, I don't have one, I can't do this. You can totally get one. This is a one gallon <laughs> keg. If you would like to make uh, something like this in a smaller batch, this is great. Uh, links below, of course, if you would like to purchase one of these, but these are really great. You can keg, I promise. The big reason I say this is not really doable or feasible for a non-kegged operation is because we're back sweetening with honey specifically, which is fermentable. Anyways, all things aside, I'm gonna throw up a couple recipe cards. Recipe card number one is the one we're doing today, which is on screen. It was a pretty big batch. I took that one kit, that one, uh, wine kit essentially that's mainly used for about five gallons and stretched it to seven and a half because I knew I would have a lot of sugars coming from the wine juice base uh, the grape wine juice grape juice base and then of course the sugar coming from the flavoring and then I also knew that honey obviously has sugar content so we went above the five gallon mark so you'll see on screen it says seven and a half gallons if you want to do this at a smaller scale with a wine kit uh, they might sell a one gallon wine kit. I don't really know for sure. I'll put a yes or no on screen. We included clover honey because I have a bunch of it right now. We also included Fermade O, of course, because we need yeast nutrient. So there's the, the seven and a half gallon card on there. And then of course, here is a one gallon card if you were somehow able to get, get a hold of a um, one gallon wine kit base. Now let's say you don't have either one of those. Here's my untested recipe for what your uh, real version of this could be. Again, I'm, I'm gonna put it on screen, it's untested, so if you wanna go test it yourself and let me know how it goes, please do. But there's a one gallon without a wine kit base. So back to this process, this is very simple. The wine kit is self-explanatory, even gives you instructions to, do, to know what to do. You essentially mix together your grape juice based base with water, and then we used honey in this circumstance too, so we added our honey in with that. We mixed it all up really well. I didn't end up using the Lauben EC1118 because it's kind of just a, it's okay yeast. I used the Lauben K1V1116, same amount of numbers there. Um, that's great for tropical fruits and things. So I thought that would be a good one. We used that yeast, we mixed it all up. We took a gravity reading. Starting gravity on this thing's about 1.080, meaning it has a potential alcohol volume by volume of 10.5%. Uh, That's assuming it ferments to 1.000. So we took that hydrometer reading, took the gravity reading with the hydrometer, I should say. We recorded it down, we wrote all of our stuff down, and we let it start fermenting. 
Because this is a higher gravity mead, um, I decided to go ahead and just add all my nutrients at the 24 hour mark. I could have staggered them over 24 hours and 48 and 72, but I was kind of lazy to be honest. So we added all of our Fermate O at the 24 hour mark and we let it continue to ferment. It was about two weeks of fermentation time. It's pretty quick. Two weeks rolls by, fermentation stops. And I knew it stopped because I had opened the lid, saw no more activity, took another hydrometer reading, and we're sitting pretty dang dry. This thing was about 0 0.990 or something like that. Super dry, maybe not that low. It was below 1.000, which meant that we definitely needed to add some sweetness we're gonna get sweetness from the, the content, sugar content coming from our uh, flavoring, and we're gonna get it coming from honey. So the next step here is to go ahead and rack it into a new container using an auto siphon and tubing. I highly recommend you get those two. That will save you a lot of problems with oxygen, which is not your friend when it comes to alcohol, or at least lower alcohol things. We racked it into a new container. The kit also came with potassium sorbate and potassium metabisulfite to stabilize this brew. So we pitched in all of that to let it go ahead and or to kill off any possible fermentation. This thing was somewhat clear at this point, so that also helped. With it stabilized, we waited about 24 hours and we went ahead and we decided, let's go ahead and add our flavoring and the honey. So we added the little gross looking bag of, bag of flavoring in there and we added a fair amount of honey. We added another three pounds of clover honey on top of that with the flavoring. Final gravity here, I believe if my numbers are correct is, it's about 1.030. So we went from like 0.99 something to 1.030, which uh, is a lot of sugar added, but because of the stabilizing agents there, this is not gonna referment. It's very, very, very important that this does not referment right now. So after we had let it set for about a week after our, um, our back sweetening agents went in, we made sure there was no further fermentation. So important, don't let there be any more fermentation or if there is, let it finish out. You can't kill it at the point it restarts up again. So once you see zero more fermentation, it's time to go ahead and clear it. Now this thing, because of the, the kit, it came with the Kisa saw and Chido San or Kato San and you are, it's a, a two-step clearing agent. So you put on the Kisa salt first, and then you wait an hour and add the Kiddo sand. At that point, you let it set for another 24 hours, and you're ready to hopefully have a clear mead that is uh, good for bottling. This timeline is really short. So we're at like three and a half weeks at this point. So this is where the fork comes into play. We've made our, our mead wine thingy, and uh, we're now ready to go ahead and decide do we want to carbonate it going this way or do we want to leave it still? The still route is very simple. Just go ahead and bottle it, just how it is. I went ahead and racked part of my stuff off to keep this still, which was helpful for me. The other part, which is the carbonated, is the other way. We're going to force carb this, you're gonna put it into a keg. So let's say you have your one gallon keg, like this guy, you just rack it right in there. Using your CO2 cartridge and all this stuff in a regulator, you're gonna go ahead and get this up to 30 PSI for about two to three days. And that should carbonate it completely. If you have a larger kegging setup, then it's the same idea, just a bigger keg with maybe some more equipment. So we went ahead and did that. We put our whole mead into the keg. We force carbonated it 30 PSI for about three days. And we have a still version, we have a kegged version. So, talked a lot. Let's see what our white peach lemonade mead tastes like. All right, we got our carbonated version in the right hand and the still version in the left. Now, why did I do both carbonated and still? Really, it's just to see the difference between a, a still version of this and a carbonated. Carbonation naturally adds some um, lift to the brew, meaning the carbonic acid, which is something that happens with carbonation, adds a little bit of acidity in a way. Of course, bubbles make it more refreshing too. That's just kind of the science behind it. Still mead might not have as much of that. It might be more warm, but let's see if that's true. So let's start with the still mead. It smells really good. The white peach thing is super interesting. I'll be curious to see how like real the flavors are here. Mm. 
I'm a pretty big fan of the flavor profile, white peach lemonade. That's obviously a winner. It does have a little bit of, I don't wanna say fake flavoring, but maybe it's my brain putting the placebo of like all of that stuff that I poured in as the flavoring. It just, it doesn't quite connect in my brain to be like true white peach lemonade, but it's still good. It still tastes like that. I think I just have this like mental block of knowing what I put in there. I think if I gave this to someone who didn't know what white peach, or well, how I got the white peach flavoring in the lemonade side, they might be less uh, worried about it. Honestly, very good. I really like it. I think that the carbonic acid is gonna be very helpful in the situation. Reminder, both of these are the same alcohol by volume, about 10 and percent, roughly. So that means that this one's just gonna have a little more lift. Mm. Also cold, that's, that's a, a factor here. The cold version of this has some other flavor profiles that pop out. Also very good, same profiles. Got this uh, warm white peach, uh, acid bite from the lemonade side. The honey is there, it's this kind of warming agent in the middle of it all. The acid balance uh, is nicer on this one, honestly, I think partially because of the carbonation. So I prefer, if I'm gonna drink more of one, it's gonna be the carbonated version. However, this is still very good. So as you're watching this, I know some of you are going, I don't, I don't care about carbonation or I, I wanna carbonate this thing, but I don't have a keg. A one gallon keg is gonna be great. Alternatively, you could also take and uh, use a non-fermentable sugar and back sweeten that way and do priming sugar. I don't know how well that would work with this brew specifically, but it's something you could try. Regardless, give it a shot. Again, I'll put up the untested recipe for uh, the white peach lemonade. This is just one, again, I'm throwing out there. It's a Hail Mary of what I think might work. If you'd like to do it in the real way, go ahead and try that and let me know how it goes. Otherwise, find yourself a wine kit. The cool thing about this video is that this wine kit, yes, it worked well for this one, but there's a ton of other flavors out there. Uh, they're a little pricey, but what I found from this experiment is that you can stretch a wine kit even further because of the honey. This thing is about the same ABV at seven and a half gallons as it would have been I think five, because of the honey, because we added more of that. So, very fun, I hope you'll go and try it. Of course, uh, there's some links below if you wanna check those out. I'll try and throw a couple wine kits from Amazon and stuff on there, but I do highly suggest to support local. Find your local uh, brew shop or somewhat local to you and see if you can support them, because that's also very helpful. Thank you for watching. I hope you'll hit like and subscribe, some buttons down below. I make a lot of content and a lot of mead related content. Most importantly, I wanna hear your experience with this stuff. Have you done this before? Have you not? Are you gonna try this theoretical recipe I threw out? Regardless if you tried these recipes or not, thank you for being here and I hope to see you in a future video. So cheers.